staying with us. So, over the weekend, obviously, everybody has been talking about the biggest topic in Nigeria. Now, there's, in fact, this morning, another breaking news is Vice President's declaration. But before we come to the Vice President's declaration, which we'll talk about a bit later, um, the topic that took the whole of social media over the weekend was this story of the gospel musician Osinachi Machiku, who mm. died. Now, her death spread like wildfire. Now, contrary to the story that was released that she died of throat cancer, further um, comments from family, friends, loved ones <laughs> alleged that she died as a result of domestic violence. Mm. Now, this obviously spurred a lot of conversation online, brings back the issue which the ladies of your view and I have been speaking about for years. Mm. And I recall that we've been consistently bashed from being male bashers mm. on TV because we talk about this women, man thing a lot. But when a woman dies, it's another opportunity to bring back this issue to the fore, to remind us of how crucial this conversation about domestic violence is. <clears throat> so the conversation there, I mean, this, this Oshinashi's experience is in several parts. And the reason why I say it's in several parts because there are other factors that make even this story more compelling. Now, they will say a woman, a regular woman, when I mean a regular woman, a regular woman who's married to a man, you know, he's beating you up, and people advise, counsel around family members, say, listen, leave, go and get independent, do, 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 find your own, take your children and move away. But when a woman is a minister of God, in the sense that she's supposed to be somebody who serves God, who hears from God, who reads the Bible, or even the Muslim, maybe she's a, she's a leader in the mosque, or where she's somebody who is a, a, revered, mm. a revered person, where she's led people in the religious, in the, even in, in, in the moral upbringing of the, of the word of God. And then she's in that kind of situation. The difficulty in coming out to say, I'm also a victim, mm. or I'm also struggling. When you have people who are watching, who have been inspired by your music, who are being blessed by what you do, even in the mosque and everything. So it's a bit difficult. The scenario is a bit different, you know, where... So that is where we find ourselves. How do women in this Osinachi's position come out? Especially also when they are coming in the backdrop of the church that says God hates divorce. Because it's drilled into our head. God hates divorce. I mean, in the last 48 hours, many ministers have come out and say, ah, go, go, I'm thinking to yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where were you? Yeah. Where Excuse were you? me. Yes. Two, were you? three years ago, where were you where people were, you? were preaching and telling us God hates divorce. Okay, so when I hear God hates divorce, my reply is God loves human beings. Mm. So God hates divorce, but he loves human life. He created human life. And at any point in time, if anything is going to come against human life, God will preserve human life. So it is important that when we read scriptures, we should, it's, it cascades down. In the order of priority, the life is sacred. Divorce is an issue, but the life of a human being is more important than the fact that they might be divorced. And I think we, the culture of shame has kept many people <laughs> in silence and has led to the death of many people. The culture of shame, many people do abortion, not because they, want to, they don't want to be pregnant, not because they don't want to carry that child. Many single young ladies do abortion because how can I, a minister, single, get pregnant? And like, how will I say it? So they do, they, we commit sin to avoid shame because of we're trying to preserve the image that we are perfect. I, I think that this is a very, very sad reminder of how important it is for everyone to realize that every minister is a human being and we all have issues. Mm. Um, Christ, um, um, when, whenever we're talking about this, I remember um, a very powerful minister of God. We talked about it when he broke the um, head of Christ embassy. When his marriage had issues, he came to paper. We spoke about it. The woman is living her life. The man is still ministering. Ministry will go on. If each individual would find their own footing and they would face God for judgment, it is not our place to judge. Our own place is to respect the sanctity of human life. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Because I, I don't want this conversation to go in the route of any woman out there having a problem, leave. Yes, that, that one, for me, is even a no conflict. It's not, it's not a contest. It's not something to talk about because we've said it, we've cried it, we've screamed it, we've drilled it into the women's mind that, listen, if it's not, if it's too hot there, leave. But I want us to focus about women like this who are ministry, who are leaders in their work. Women who are, I don't know what they call them in your church, in your, your like mm. women leaders. We call them women of honor, women who no, mm. first ladies, dickinesses. Mm. You know, these are people who are suffering in silence. 
and because of the, their position, they are forced to keep quiet. And even people know in their church, yeah, but they just happening. keep it and they're helping them to manage it. Mm -hmm. Pastors know, wife, I'm not saying this, I'm just saying in this situation, it happens. people know oh. and they keep it. It's sad that, you know, a woman sometimes, these so-called women that we talk about are the most disempowered people. Yeah. So we talk about the sanctity of life. What is the life worth living when you're not thriving? So mm. you are living, you are in that marriage. If she didn't die, she wasn't even living a life worth living. Mm. She didn't have a life. She lived by somebody else's rules. So what kind of girls are we raising? And when I read this, I just kept thinking, thank you, God. Because when we were being raised... People questioned the method of raising us. My father was questioned for raising too many, too many outspoken women. Mm. How can you have all four girls and they can talk anyhow? That was how we were <laughs> described. I could say what I felt, when I felt it, how I felt it. And no matter how rude somebody claimed it was, it would be addressed. Mm -hmm. It's either your tone was too harsh, your tone was too rude, addressed, or what exactly was the problem? I remember when I was at, somebody attempted to rape me. I tried to get my mother's attention. She was too busy with homework. Hey, 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 grand Pepe, grand this. I said, Mommy, I need to say something. And so it was outside, public. All our friends were all busy, busy. I, I said, somebody almost raped me. What is it? And that caught her attention full time. In some climes, they'll be like, this became too loose, safe. You took the talk, you know? Let's raise our girls to value that yeah. voice. This woman had a talent she would have gone places with. Mm. In her songs now, I didn't even know those songs. I, didn't, I knew the songs. I never knew who the, uh, the, the, was the, the, original. the original owner. I just loved that song that he made, used to come, you know, yeah. just loved it. Now, listening to the song differently and saying she was even crying for help. Mm. In her song was I Escape. Mm. So let's raise our women to say, okay, I want to be different. If divorce is a sin, I want to commit it. I need to live life. I, we need to raise women who will say, whatever you like. But if they do we that, we will we'll call them loose. We'll call them that they can't call. We say society. No, society will call your child names. But, but you, you support it and you make it valid. Yes. If you people call your child names, you will say, no, Amy Mo be your money. I give birth to this child. I value Whatever the problem is, I want to know the it. church so must do this. Not suffer for long. Mm. Okay, let me so come to our, let me our, get our child's this. power. Very sad situation, and um, just because we're, you know, concentrating on a woman in ministry, and the fact that that God hates divorce is on their head, mm -hmm. and so for them, it's a reason why they would not leave an abusive marriage. Because I've come to the realization that an adult female would always come up with reasons or excuses for not make, taking a decision for herself. Mm -hmm. There's no way, you know, you talked about people are coming out and saying she should have left, but if there's no way you can force an adult human being out of their, her house, you could say, you're in a, I can see you're in an abusive marriage, and I think the best thing for you to leave, but, she, but you cannot bundle her. her out of the house, you mm -hmm. cannot carry her out of the house, she would have to make that decision. Exactly. And women, there's something in the way we're raised where we always feel that there's this Prince Charming, knight in shining armor that will come and will save change. you. You will save yourself in the end. You are the one that will make a decision for your life. So that's something we need to talk to um, women about. Now for the God hates divorce. I think that we should start looking at this divorce differently. Mm. Divorce for me already starts when you have desecrated that marriage. When you have, no when marriage. you are beating that woman, mm. when you are hitting that man, when you are saying very mean things to each other, things that are bringing you down, things that are destroying your happiness, everything. For me, that's already divorce. It does not mean the paper. There was a time that there was no paper that was signed before a marriage was done or a paper that was signed before a divorce was carried out. So if you are willing to tear someone apart, each other apart, if you are willing to take away the person's peace, then you have already divorced. So for me, God is saying he hates that. That oh. is what he hates. It is not just in the signing of the paper. It's the fact mm. that you are bringing, you are ready to yes. kill that marriage. That and that is it. Mm. And so people are saying that until that paper, until I go to a court and mm -hmm. say, and leave and you've abuse. already divorced your wife if you're beating her yes, and you're treating her like she's not important. Mm -hmm. so and that's, that's what God hates. That, so, so at that moment, if God hates that, now how that, do we fix it? So the man, the man gets counseling and the woman gets counseling separately. Mm. So you're happy. So, I mean, the reason why I want us to focus on these women. That's who are, an option. Who, if it's bad, it's not that bad. Counseling at some stage is okay. For some people, 
sanity is you run as far as your leg can take Let's you. Say separately. Mm -hmm. And you even leave. You can remarry. Recently, a couple made headlines where they, you know, got back together, having solved their sep uh, differences individually. So they got a divorce. They separated for years, and they came back together. They even wanted years separate. They co-parented and they saw better. They missed each other. In Islam, when you divorce a person, it's mandatory that you must marry somebody else before you can remarry. Reason is so that. Whatever differences you thought, you know, are were insurmountable, when you see that other people have their own, you've tested grounds, when you come back together, you can sort of value each other more. You know, so I was having a conversation with, um, with the minister not too long ago about this matter, and I was saying that, because I was, I was accusing him that you guys caused what we are going through right now. Mm. And he said that, Murray, that's not totally true, because there are cases where men have hit their wives. They've come to us. We've counseled the man helped him through his depression during that period. And they are back together and they are happy. So we've seen where women have endured, where they've managed this situation and it worked. And it worked. Mm -hmm. So when we use that kind of counsel, so what he's saying that, that counsel might not work for everybody. But what the church has done is that they've used it to say, okay, okay, yes, he slapped you. Maybe you provoked him. Maybe something happened. Maybe, you know, all of these funny, funny excuses that they give. But they, this pastor was telling me that, Mariah, it has worked. In, that in formula some cases. works for many other marriages, and they're happy today. Okay, so can we talk about the main reason women don't step aside? Because there are many women who know that they are staring death in the face on a regular basis by being in that marriage, but they cannot afford to leave the marriage because they don't have the financial capacity to carry their That's children. Right and they don't want to leave their children. So let's talk about the money part. And let's talk about the fact that nobody wants to marry or remarry a woman. The stigma of nobody would marry a woman that already has three or four children. That is the reality on ground. And it is wrong. And it has been, it has been reinforced over and over again. Where you're seen as you've had a child, you're old cargo. You've had a child. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me okay. answer that. that. And that is bad. Let me say something. There are people who have married. Married, and trust me, they, they are born with they they met five husbands children. that have never married before. That, yeah. I know a woman who had three with five kids. Children. Mm -hmm. She had three children. Mm -hmm. She found a man that has never married before. What that on a stone, that old gist. Yeah. So you so can still meet a man. So it, could be, so it could be an internal exactly. thing yes. for the woman. Yes. So it, it could be an internal thing that women are reinforcing a belief that supports their insecurities about themselves. And so if we help our women to be more confident in themselves, they can face any challenge. So it brings us back to what you were saying. Let's talk to the Let women. Let me go on a quick break. We'll come back. Stay with us, Ubrata. Hmm. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this matter that trended over the weekend concerning the death of the gospel singer um, Osinachi. And the reason why we're discussing is because there's an allegation that she may have died as a result of domestic violence. Now, we also heard this morning that the police had arrested her husband, mm -hmm. uh, maybe just for this questioning to understand what happened. Uh, but we're going to be following the story to see exactly how the whole thing transpired. Although initially we were told she died as a result of throat cancer. But going back to this silence that we have, why women, especially women in ministry, and the reason why, see, as I said, there are different layers. Mm -hmm. The regular woman, we've told her over and over that leave, and she has given reasons like finances, what am I going to go to? And there have been also NGOs, people offering help to support people like that. So that, I could, that is the conversation from that day. But women who are leaders in, in the mosques, you know, pastors' wives, mm. Because I know of a pastor's wife who actually was beaten by her husband. The whole church knew. Uh -huh. But they just kept quiet. Uh -huh. They said the woman should come sad, quiet, but in her. They know God. that. They knew. But everybody just kept, because she's the wife of the pastor. So that is, as we can fake it the worst we are, but that is the reality in Nigeria. Many pastor's wives are being beaten. Minister's wives, head of church, head of choir, head, head of the ushering, their wives. Right, I'm going through this. So, you see, in this conversation of this is a, an average woman, this is a minister's uh, mm. person, this mm. is a church person, this mm. is a most person, those layers, those categorizations are the reason why we're in bondage. Mm. Mm. Simple and short, this is a woman who is being abused. No, wherever you are, whoever you are, which part of the world you are, what category, General. you are a woman that's being abused. Simple. General. Because we use these layers to say, my case is different because I'm a minister's wife. How would I 
Mm. My case is even, but it's the you same beating. Like it's the same pain. It's, it's the same um, yeah. unhappiness. It's the same disrespect. It's the same <laughs> unkindness. So, you know, it makes no difference. Those layers. The finances. I have heard people say it's women who are not empowered, who do not have jobs, who do not have money. But I know people who are breadwinners. The roof over their heads is because of her paying the rent or she built it. The school that the children are going like because she shows up and she pays those like bills. The house that people come, the food that they eat is because of that woman. And yes, she's being beaten mm -hmm. and being di uh, disrespected and she cannot leave. And she will look for another layer to say, well, you know, this is my second marriage. Mm. We always find one excuse, one mm. reason to, to always... The only thing excuse. that we mm. should know is that if Life. you're in an abusive relationship to the, you know, just leave. I know people have called people us out and said that we are, we are encouraging divorce. As for me, I don't think that that's an encouragement of divorce. The person that hates that person is already the person that has encouraged the divorce. Mm -hmm. We're encouraging protection of lives. Simple and short. So that's what they come doing. on Twitter yeah. to come and ask us questions. We are discussing preservation of, of life. life. Yes. Ah. I don't care if it's the woman that is being beaten or the man that is beating, beating. Beating or he being beaten. Before, anybody before being anybody beaten. Is beating, beating. It is preservation of life that is extremely important. So I will quickly clear some stupid myth. And from a great joy, they say, go, 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 go. If you say, uh, cry, no, they keep picking, cry, no, they keep picking, you get the level of cry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, some damaging emotional abuse can take away the quality of life of a person. The person will just be existing. Yeah. No life, nothing, no use. So, ego, ego, go, beating, no, they keep picking. Internal blood, all this kind of, is killing. Mm -hmm. It's damaging. And then I want to quickly use this opportunity to greet those in-laws on our way down. When we say, if your daughter-in-law is being beaten, you will, it will not be something cultural. It's not too deep. It doesn't have that meaning. If she chooses to leave, you tell her children's stories. Ah, your mother won't go do a show. That's why she left your father. You will not be honest enough to explain that your son is not up to his responsibilities. It's mm. not up to a man. Who would rather blame a woman? And this is because it is more. Moral, this is not about gender now. Mm. In this society where we live in, what my eye have seen is that it's a 99% Blame of a woman who chooses to live an abusive relationship. Yeah. It is our fault if our children are grown up. Somebody has even masterminded his children together and sold a prostitution story so tight that it took the children years to see how well their mother has been working. Because the moment she left the marriage, just as the story you talked about, the roof went, mm. the food went, everything went. And so the children now thought, okay, if my mother went to prostitute, out of hunger, they found their way to their mother and they found food. They found roof. They saw hard. Let me take this call. So Good morning, please, Josephine. If you are are you there? Tell your son if your son is bad. Good morning, Josephine. Are you there? Many minutes. So <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. You can. Yes. Well done. I'm so so sad and I'm so pained. I'm so pained to hear this. This woman has has. has through our music, we so many souls to Christ. Hearing our music alone will make you reflect of how you are supposed to live this life. That this life is not your own. But such a person should not allow to be in such danger. We should talk, we should keep on emphasizing on how we should be treating our children mm. as a boy, how you are supposed to treat your sister, how you are supposed to treat your wife, train them. Then they, as a government, as a UK government they are doing, they have mm. reserved, they have a, 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 when a woman complains, they have asked for you, for, for safety first. Our government, all these are things that government is supposed to put in place because so many women don't have the ability, they don't have the capability to go out of danger. The government should come and help women. I'm emphasizing it. If you go to UK, the way they behave, my sister has uh, uh, an abuse relationship. When my sister complains, they give her out. Hmm. They give her out for self-defense. The old man realized that this thing is it. They will take everything. So he came back to his senses and apologized. And then they, they went on. And from that day, he did not touch her. So the government has a role in this issue. This domestic violence, the government should take it serious. They should have a plan. A budget for this attitude. This, so that we help every woman. So that we will not be losing a potential soul.
Thank you very much. We're going to go on a break. When we come back with some continuous conversation, stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this issue of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And as a, one of the reasons why it was important to bring up the issue of layering, because we, 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 we judge celebrities differently for certain things. Oh, because it's, we are on the table now. People know us. There's certain things we can't do, certain things that we are as happy, as great as it is that you're in a happy marriage. God forbid anything happens tomorrow. There's a, there's a, there's a way you, you, you'll, be, you'll be reluctant to share it because of how many people have supported and seen us as role models in their lives. And I'm putting that in the, in the, in the hands of somebody who is leading a church where you've counseled women in marriages. You've helped people to restore their homes. You've helped girls in making decisions on who they marry. And there, at some point, you start becoming a victim. Now, you're in that situation. Are you a, are you a minister singing to the church? People see you as a leader. You read Bible verses every day, telling, telling the young girls what to do in the way of the Lord. And yet, you are suffering in silence. That's the conversation. How do women in that kind of situation find the boldness, even within their scriptures, to say, I am a victim. I want out of this marriage. Even though they say, the, the, the church has said, or the Bible has said, God hates divorce. I think That's what, the conversation. I, I think that one of the core things, and I can speak to Christianity, I think one of the core things about God is that we are authentic, that mm -hmm. we are true to ourselves. God takes us the way we are. He accepts the weakness that we embody as being human. And, I, and it is a fallacy that some people have propagated for a long time that some human beings are perfect. There is no human being that is perfect. Not a minister, not a pastor. There is none. And once we take away that lie that has been consistently said to us, we will realize that every human being can fail. We have seen ministers for years that cannot have children. And they lay hands on people. And those people go ahead and get pregnant and have children. But you yourself cannot have. Paul had a thorn in his flesh that God said he permitted the thorn to remain there just so that you are a human. God wants us to be human. Mm. It is in our humanness that we can transform lives more impactfully. Mm. So I think pastors coming out to say, I am going through stuff. There is nothing that has won my res the respect of my pastor's wife, Miss um, Nikki Adeyemi. Like when she said how she was struggling to, with self-expression because she was married. She is married to a powerful man. She knows she's powerful, but she always feels like she's in a shadow. The, she said that she shared it years ago, and it was just so. It won my respect. It won my heart because I saw her. That can you imagine this powerful woman that we see ministry? So she actually feels insecure about uh, something. something. There is nothing, if you are a woman out there and you are suffering, expressing your pain. But a woman I, I, on like this show, us in Nigeria, should have weighed options. Let me, let me, so let me. I say it all the time on this show. You know, we said it last week. Just last week, we were talking about how you shouldn't see everything mm. outside. So it will seem like we are giving a contrary opinion. Yeah. We are against you saying vulgar, insensitive, insulting your partner. Your partner might beat you. You come out and say, I'm going through stuff in my marriage that I cannot share with the world. But right now, I'm stepping out of this mm. marriage. Stop. Doesn't mean you will cast down that Stop. human being. Yeah. So I, I feel we must learn okay. to separate it. May I quickly okay. say this? That Nima, I want to hear what you want to say, wait. but let me give you, let me hold you for a second. Okay. Let me bring in this person. You hold it for a while. Good morning. Hello, hello are you there? Uh, good morning. Uh, You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Okay. Abdul. The, the topic, yes. the topic, uh, this one is a lovely uh, topic. You know, I'm from a polygamous school. Mm. You know, and if you are from a polygamous school, you understand what I'm talking about. Like this, our religion has really caused problems for a lot of people in this world. But you are saying that God hates the divorce. Is there anywhere in the portion of Holy Quran or in the portion of Holy Bible that God specified that uh, you should be violent with your partner? Okay. There's but no way. not specify in any of those two Quran. There's no way. Like if we are in the very toxic relationship, mm -hmm. either as a man or as a man. My brother, you have to take decision, quick decision and leave that marriage yes. for good. You know, the only, I normally have problems. You no, know, when I was growing, what I have experienced as a problem, because then I normally have problems with two of my friends, with two of my friends behave for one. Any of my friends that went ahead in this generation, to go and marry another woman, I will never be friends with that person. Mm. 
Hmm. Thank you very much, Abdul, for your comments. Neymar, I want okay, to I wanted to, to say this. So you want to leave your marriage. It's one thing. You can leave your marriage and you don't know anybody, any details. Mm. Ah, ma madam, you are divorced. Oh, yes, irreconcilable differences. You can continue to interpret it for the, on Google oh, yeah, for the next generation. <laughs> but there's a timing when you're, you're coming out with what you've been through will be empowering. It's not this talk talk. Ah, you can't find 500,000. It's not those kind of talk talk we are talking. The way talk is trying to explain. When you leave your marriage because you're dealing with things like this. I, my fear in this case scenario that we have is that there's an issue of, a core issue of how to survive and how to thrive that she believes is totally tied to that marriage. But leaving your marriage does not mean you have to talk. You don't have to explain to anybody. Every marriage is for well, independence. What is the stigma? Well, no, 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 so Mariah is, is asking you see, this people is in, the, in, the, in the public wait, space. Wait, wait, That's wait, the question. Mm -hmm. Mariah is asking people in the public space, people that are ministers, I people, think that it is important you if explain yourself. If I leave yourself. my marriage today, I don't owe you guys. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, There's a sure. regular woman. Wait, no, yeah, and yeah, there are no regular women anymore. Who are responsible for the whole congregation. We are not regular women anymore. If a divorce comes out, they say, I know me those of you women, they always talk about their marriages. Pictures of our spouses who fly, or, or pictures we've taken together we've floated yes. maybe mm -hmm. on, on vacation or anything. As I am here now, if I leave my marriage, reasons are best known to me. I would not explain, not even to the closest person to me, until it is time. Mm -hmm. I have learned that even very young, that there's a time for that conversation. Okay. There's a time when that, that issue you went through will be empowering to somebody else. Because what you talk a lot, two times, you water Let me stay on Nima. Like, but there, like, but you can leave. Nima, let me stay with you leave. for that for a second. Don't stay there. Now, don't you think that also would affect your children when people are now saying, ah, your woman that is it? Because mm, it happened story. in the story that we had in the group, where a woman kept quiet about her. She left her husband with the kids. This man now went, he's a pastor. He now went on the altar. To say she's a prostitute, that she poisoned him, that she, you know, she's, that people now say, call her, ah, so that's why you left your husband, so you poisoned him. She now had to come out and say, no, this man is a, uh, is a cultist, mm. he wanted to use me, no. She now came out to tell us exactly, exactly what happened, but you see, these lies were being peddled right. against her. Mm. Just, I, I have a family side that's Christian, and this happened. Yes. This prostitution story, because of his uh, so, so called man of God appearance, went flying. And the woman wanted to put her out story to her children because they are taking a side. They had felt, you know, this is the this, uh, unprivileged side. I had to beg her. I said, wait for the time. Mm. She didn't need to tell that story. At the, the time. Till now. She didn't need to tell her children anything. You know, you give sometimes, when you are with a spouse that is abusive, you are a shield. You are protecting his weak side, his bad side, because you are still there. When you leave, he will not have anybody to show it to but his own children sometimes. If you leave and you that's keep quiet, that's a perspective. He could not but show his that's real side mind. to his mm. children. And they were wondering, but this was our own so-called man of everything. Okay, everything. let me come to Maryman. So this. sometimes well, not your because, speech all the time. Okay, ahead, so I understand what you're saying. If you're already in the public eye, if you're a minister and you sort of have that, you owe maybe your congregation, you owe your followers or something, some form of explanation. People do it all the time. Mm -hmm. They put out a press release explaining their own words and say, and we're asking for your privacy in this time. I think this is the first and the last I'm going to say about this. They give enough information, the, the information that they are comfortable to give about that. But the truth is, however you put it, Mariah, um, society is going to call you out because you're a minister's person, because you're out there in public. It's still just an excuse. You have to be authentic. I like that word very much. You have to be true to who you are. You have to be mm -hmm. true to your own happiness. Mm -hmm. if that is what you want. That's the only way you can live it and live it boldly. When you stand in front of... Um, the, um, if you're a minister, you stand in front of your congregation and you tell them about the good things that happened to you, you should be able to boldly also tell them about the um, struggles that you're having. Mm -hmm. And I always find that it connects with people more. We had this lady that came and talked to us about her life mm -hmm. and how God had helped her, you know, the Moi Moi lady mm -hmm. and how God had helped her. She said something that I found profound. She said, I have not always been nice or I used to be jealous and envious. And she said how that affected her life. And when she changed, she saw how that affected her life. Authentically living her life. And all of us, everyone that watched that show, I still keep getting messages about that yes. show. She was just 
honest mm -hmm. about who she is. And that is what we need to do. Wherever you find yourself, just be honest yeah, about so your happiness. Mm. I can't do this anymore because this is what I'm going through right. or I cannot discuss the full details of it right now, Both. but I am stepping out of this marriage. Exactly. Let me see if it does not... What know, we see in this call... Me. Good morning, are you there? I think I have Kelechi. She's been holding for a while. Kelechi, good morning. Morayanko, good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. Uh, please, uh, Toko spoke my mind when she made a suggestion to you, when you were asking her about her weekend. You see, I wanted to make this suggestion all this while, but last, last week, you know, I was the last person that called, they kept me on hold for too long, my grade is going to exhaust. So I'm looking for you to EVC. And uh, make them buy me a return on the Naira card. Oh, yeah, Sorry. send your well, number. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, see, well, I wanted to make a suggestion to you. You see, can you have a detached platform? Yeah, we are to carry out a kind of go beyond this talk show because everybody wants to be a talk show host. Mm. You understand? So that you come out in the media, people will see you and celebrate you. Please, Mora, you know, say your name rings bell <laughs> in the mainstream media in Lagos. Okay, so yeah. about to the show. Go beyond, go beyond this talk show. Okay. Do you understand to carry out this uh, uh, activism for, uh, for, oh. for women? Oh, okay. You have a lot. You have a lot to well, talk to about. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very you much, Kelechi. Yeah. Yes, no, I, I was going to go to. Uh, I lost my train of I wanted to talk about okay. the, an experience in Islam that we yeah. see. So you have mother-in-laws come and a woman says, "I want to leave my marriage, but my three children, one is on the breast milk, yeah. and she will say, Shubomowa. And they will find some affairs. In English, take the child. did you come with did a child? Did you bring a child? Yes. And you know, when a woman is about to leave her marriage, the baggage she cannot leave behind with a clear heart is the children. children. So she will continue to loiter around that marriage till she's begging to come back to a marriage mm. because of her dependent children. If you're a mother and you're watching this show and you're in that category, because we know some names we cannot mention here, this would have been an opportunity to really mm. call out these mother in laws who would then take their children to Lekki. The woman is gumming go around 1,004. You know yourselves. You know, <laughs> trying to see, <laughs> to, see, to see her children. Please, shame on you. Mm. Release her children. Yeah. Let her walk away and inform your child to be a man by maintaining his family. So I want to say that as a society. Maintaining his children with her. Except you can prove that a woman is not a fit parent. Yeah, cool. She's That's into drugs. That's in the she's, you know, a bad influence mm -hmm. because she's having some immoral uh, attitude. Right. Going back to this matter, her this children. matter, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, there were, there were, there were um, comments on social media saying that those who are coming out now to say about it, where were they when it was happening? Why didn't they come out? But I mean, that's a difficult they thing. Might it's a, it's a person, they, might, they might even know. They might God forbid know. I know. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go to social, oh, my friend, Joker. Exactly. Mm. Her husband is beating her. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. You can't anybody. do that. And mm. as I said in the beginning, it's you private. cannot drag someone out of their homes. Mm. You may have said, she, she may have had people who start with her and say, this is not right for you. What could they have done better, though? Trust me, I've had that conversation. From, see, I have a friend who's been beaten, who left her marriage, went back, was beaten, left the marriage, we had a very tough conversation, and I found out she went back again. I kept my mouth shut because you've done twice. Yeah. I'm praying that you don't get beaten out okay. again, but the, the third time. But I can't say anything beyond that. Nobody can help you beyond your willingness yeah. to help if, yourself. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, if, if that person be, if that person abuses you physically so bad that you can take a case to the police station. They can do that. And that person has the right to say she's not pressing any charges. Yes. And because exactly. of the way our culture is, our society is, they say, well, their husband and wife, they can they solve it. it. So that's the thing about, there's no hero. There's no uh, knight in shiny armor that will come and save you. You have to save yourself. In the end, you have to make that decision. No matter how, much, how big your support system is, they can only support the decision you finally make for yourself. Let me come to you in a second. Let me, um, Yakub, are you there? Good morning, Mariah. Good morning, Yakub. Yeah, long time now. Then good morning to you all in the studio. Mm -hmm. Good thing. Uh, okay, okay. Mariah, you see, it is unfortunate. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. It is unfortunate that uh, we still have some people that think that uh, if you leave your marriage, uh, it's not going to hold all well for you. Why am I saying that? Uh, Mama did the fault. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Sister Tope here. He mentioned, he mentioned earlier that, that there's some women passed through a lot of agony in their marriage. Mm -hmm. But for them to leave, they were thinking, can I be able to carry this baggage? Can I be able to carry home with all these four or three or five children? Mm -hmm. How do I going to feel them? But my question is this. If you're in a marriage whereby your husband turns you into a punching bag, 
every day beating, and then he, he finally resorts to death. Who is going to cater Take for those children, children now? Anyway. So he said, does it to run? Because whoever run for today is living to fight for another day. Because if you run for your life, you run for those children, and then whatever you can do to be able to take, take care of those children, find way to do it. Because if you dare not run for your life, you, mm. you can die within that matter. At the end of the day, your, even your immediate family, they will not tell you, they, they will not tell the husband and right. the family of the husband. Thank you very much, Yaku. You are not going to take it all because of the children and all that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Yaku. See, as I said, I want this conversation to be very specific because mm. we've heard of the, this comment of who's going to take out the children General. and everything. Mm. There are other factors that are also important in this kind of situation. This, this kind of situation is so peculiar because a lot of women who are um, leaders in churches are going through it. Two things I want to talk about. Third party syndrome. Mm. Every woman is told, don't let a third party come into your marriage. Mm. Don't talk don't to third party. Anybody. Don't third party. They no, ring it in our brain so much that they beat you up, you keep it quiet. Mm. You can't tell anybody. Because they're not allowed to bring third party into your marriage. Because wow. they're the ones to destroy it. So this thing, people just keep mum, number one. Hmm. Number two, there's another factor where, as a minister in church, you feel that this information, although you, you told us that you're still a human being, stop putting the layers of who I am. But there are other things that where you help to build this church. We have 2,000 members. These are, these are things that God gave us this vision. Am I going to use my own information, my, my own suffering to destroy this thing, this thing? You know, that's the mentality a woman thinks. Wait, in this situation whereby I am the wife of the pastor, the pastor is beating me. If I come up with this, it will destroy him, to destroy God's work. You know, I am not thinking, how would God handle it? Well, you know, God will solve it for me. Hmm. God will talk to him so that he can stop because God doesn't want his work to destroy. You know, you are constantly making that excuse for yourself <laughs> because you're saying you don't want to bring out this information because you want to be the... The sacrificial lamb. Yeah. I will suffer it wow. so that the work of God can continue. This is the mentality of women in this position. Mm, that's mm. why I said. I said that's why, that. when, like, that's why, that's why when you die, they'll bury you and yeah. then marry another person on top of and your head. And the second person. Okay, so life. So you talked about. Um, I have to protect the church. I have to protect the name. What we have built. The person that needs to do the protection is the person that is destroying it, and the person destroying it is the person that is physically abusive. It is not you that's mm. the victim that is accepting the beating. Mm. And you know, this is where we, I feel that we have talked to the women enough. Now let us talk to society. Society is you and I. The reason why a lot of people are talking, and the reason why our call, our callers maybe and a comments concerning this one is different now and seem to be more on the woman's side because the woman died. Mm. Because when a woman does not die and she leaves a home, we call them oh. out, we insult them. This society is bring them down. Yes. Oh, no wonder. She's happy. You know, she's a career woman. She's always she singing from one place to the other. When does she stay at home to cook Look for the house? Look at how fair she Look, is. Yes. She's Do bleaching. you understand? Those are the things <laughs> that make women stay in the house. So that's why we have talked to women enough, in, um, enough for me. Don't listen to society. Society will call out anybody and anyhow. They don't, they don't take sides. They just take the sides of whatever it is that they feel. Now everybody is holding their chest and calling this man out. That's because she died. If she did not die. But the th sad thing about it is that when you die, life continues. This man, when they do a, an investigation, and if they cannot they prove evidence. anything, yes. because he, he, he said she said if he will remarry. And life will go on. If oh, he's oh, unfortunate and he continues beating the second one, maybe then they'll catch him. But if nothing else, Let's they'll watch. use it as an example and say, his second marriage is so perfect. What were people talking about? That one would have, could have been lying. Let's go on a quick We're going to come back, we'll wrap up on this and um, take a few calls. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.